for any self-respecting trainer, the art of winning grade one races is really what it's all about. And for former champion trainer Michael de Kock, it was an absolutely fantastic season down in KwaZulu-Natal this year, where he was victorious in the Hollywood Bets Gold Challenge with a horse called Al Mutana, who was absolutely spectacular. Out of the top draw, Safe Passage was victorious in the Daily News 2000, and Aragosta also ran very, very well in that particular race. And then the crowning glory of the season was a filly called Sparkling Water, who sauntered away with the Hollywood Bets July in absolutely resounding fashion. She went off to Maritzfontein for a change of scenery and to recharge those batteries, and she's now back in training. And we are just about to catch up with Mike de Kock on this rather fresh summer's morning to find out exactly what kind of plans he has for his very powerful string, commencing October 1 here at Turfontein Racecourse, where it's the top bet spring challenge. MK's proud in front, he's two lengths in front Al Matana charging towards the outside with linebacker Al Matana though, went past and wins with authority. Safe passage with a rip-roaring finish, he's reaching for the stars and safe passage will go on. And sparkling water making history, uh, sparkling water, jet dogs taking off but sparkling water makes her statement. Forever mine has been brave. William Robertson is on the chase. Then comes Bingwa. Further back then Puerto Manzano. Forever Mind in the lead and showing no signs of stopping. Forever Mind won. Second William Robertson. And the form of the de Kock yard at the moment is very, very good both here and in KwaZulu to tell you that a good few winners. And I'd like to start off by talking about a horse called Forever Mind. He's a son of Versen Getrix. He's clearly a horse that doesn't enjoy too much racing and he's come back with the ability that he showed early on in his career. He's a happy horse, he's always on his toes, he wants to run. So, uh, you know, it was a um, very pleasing win, but I'm under no illusions when we, we get up a division. There were a few horses getting a lot of weight behind him that they're going to be tough to beat. So we just gave him a chance to run out at the farm and just let his skeleton settle down, which he's done, and also he came down 10 pounds in the ratings. He's reaching for the stars and Safe Passage will go on. Safe Passage looked absolutely unbelievable when he was with Jody Peters, not to say that he didn't look anywhere near the same when he was in racing. He's clearly a hugely high-class individual. What's your plan of action for him this summer? Yeah, well, we've got to have a go at the Summer Cup, perhaps with the prep mile in the charity mile. And then, uh, obviously, Cape Town, you know, we'll take him down to Cape Town after the Summer Cup with the Met in mind, maybe a, a, a run in the Queen's Plate. We'll just see how he takes the journey down, you know. You know funny enough, you mentioned the Queen's Plate. I had a very brief chat to uh, Gary Player yesterday and to Gaynor Rupert, and it's now known as the King's Plate. Why is it the King's Plate? Well, I think Gaynor is of the opinion that because Her Majesty the Queen has passed away that they now need to rename the race the King's Plate because uh, of Prince Charles. Well, that can be a new race. Can't we make a new race the King's Plate? <laughs> we'll keep the Queen's Plate. The point is that you've got another horse that's got a, a very, very bright future above him and he looks perfectly suited to Turfentane, which he's already showed by winning the SA Derby, Aragosta. Yeah, he's also been to the farm. He's had a rest, put it that way, and he's coming back nice and fresh. Turfentane specialist, uh, I'm sure. Met might be on the sharp side for him, but we'll have a crack at it, you know. He's a um, pretty sound horse. He ran well in the Daily News. Um, those will be, those will be the, the opposition and obviously uh, the lights of uh, Jet Dock and uh, the older horses as well. I'm just talking about the three-year-olds that, that he ran with last year. So The Met um, seems to be shaping up to a good race this year if the Joburg horses you know, come down and participate at their best. And there would be absolutely no disgrace in running him in the 2-8 um, that, of course, Sparkling Water won last year because it's a, it's a high-class race and it, it helped her win Stayer of the Year. Sure. Um, but, you know, again, he's, uh, if we can, he's also prefer to go to the Met with. But Cleaver Green has now picked up the advantage and has gone two lanes clear. Going to take a good one to beat him from here. Yes, Cleaver Green draws away in good style. Muzi Yeni has the luxury of just punching this one out. OK, Cleaver Green's a horse that uh, clearly has loads of ability. You showed him up early and he stood up to the test. He's had a bit of a break. Yeah, he's off. He's not back in training yet. He's, he's still spelling. Uh, in light work there, he'll come back uh, the end of September. 
We saw some marvellous camera work from Gail down at Moritz Fontaine Tain Sparkling Water looking absolutely beautiful. Is, is she back with you yet? Yeah, she's back and in full training. So would it be fair to say that the Summer Cup would be her main mission? Yeah, we, well, yeah, I mean, we've got to have a crack at the Summer Cup for sure. I don't know if I'll give her a run be, before that. I might go straight into it and then look at the paddock stakes possibly met. Um, we'll see. But, you know, it's a whole different ball game at weight for age as opposed to the handicap terms where she won the July. Um, the the paddock stakes is also 1,800. But she showed her versatility this filly in the mile. She ran unbelievably well. Uh, the group won before the Summer Cup, and she won a 1400 beating Forever Mine, although extremely well handicapped to do so. So she's, you know, I, look, she's by Silvana. She can only get better and better. You mentioned that Al has been sold to Mauritius. Um, is Elsa Keats still around with you? Elsa Keats still around, yeah. A little bit of a disappointing winter, but uh, we took a step back, threw him out, and he's coming back really nicely, yeah. Warren and Arun have always been uh, great fun to have in the yard and, and great supporters of the yard, and I believe they've got a good few horses with you. Yes, um, we've got a, got a nice string uh, for them, and uh, as you say, um, they're a lot of fun to have in the yard for sure, apart from the fact that they um, you know, big operators in the game today, and uh, I think just going to get bigger too. Well, if you see what they did with the Charity Mile, which is always a very well-supported race, they, they turned it into the Honor Mission Steel Road Mile, and, and it got enormous coverage, and rightfully so. Yeah, it's a good day to sponsor. I think, you know, the, the charity component of, of the Charity Mile is is pretty important for the community, and, uh, uh, you know, it's it's something that they're keen to give back. So, you know, a, a really good race. A good day for them to sponsor. On the basis of a, a non-reporting telephone call, I had a... Brief chat to Paul Peter yesterday, who informs me that uh, MK's Pride and a few other horses have come to your yard, and MK's Pride is a horse that simply deserves to be mentioned as a horse chestnut winner. Yes, he's obviously a beautiful animal, uh, really nice. Of course, Mkali is a hell of a character and uh, extremely enthusiastic, and I quite frankly enjoy his enthusiasm, especially when he has a, a winner. But he's a colourful character to have in the game. So I just hope I can um, produce what Paul has uh, for him. Um, he certainly looks a, a, a really nice horse. He's had a, a you know, he, he's had a hard campaign. He had a Joba campaign. He had a Durban campaign. He's not, you know, for me, he, he would have half wanted to have a bit of a rest. But um, uh, I see he's back up and, and fully at it. So we've got to probably aim him at the Champions Mile and see from there. That's got to be his primary target at this stage of the game. Yeah, I think if I look at the race 10 times over, I'm not saying for one second that he could ever have beaten Comedy Dung or Jet Dark, but he was very unlucky in the Champions Cup at Gravel. Yeah, he ran a very good race there. But, you know, as I say, that was the end of July. Uh, we're now early September and he's still on the boil. So, you know, those, it's tough to keep them going 12 months of the year. And we'll be looking to go to Cape Town with him, Queen's Plate, etc., you know, so... We'll take it uh, um, step by step. I'll see how, he, how he's uh, enjoying his work or isn't. And if we'd have to take a step back, we will. And I think what Kurs obviously has to understand is that when you've come from this point of success, South African record holder in terms of number of wins, it's, there's only one way and that's down, uh, despite the fact that the horses come to Michael de Kock's yard or Sean Terry's yard or Justin Snaith's yard with great respect. Yeah, well, look, we hope we can do him justice, you know. Um, as I said, the horse has been on the boil for a long time and, um, you know, possibly wants to freshen up more than anything else. On a personal note, my mum and dad have been in Australia since 1994 and I know how much I miss them, but it must have been the biggest tonic and the biggest elixir that Michael de Kock and his family have had for many a year to, to share this joy with, with Matthew and Kirsten and with Monique and Liam and all the, the beautiful things that happened in Australia. Yeah, look, it was fantastic, you know, to have the family together for the first time in almost three years, I think, you know, was uh, really special. And, um, yeah, some good news from Kirsten as well. Um, it's hard watching your family, you know, uh, in other countries. You'd, you'd love to have them, yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, Matthew's carving his own way in Australia, which I'm very proud about. And Kirsten's doing her thing in America too, you know, so... Who knows, you know, where, where the future takes us. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, that, that Matthew's actually achieving what he's achieving on his own, which is uh, something I think he set out to do. 
And I think what's happened really is that you were looking to kind of wind down, not stop at all, but keep it at a manageable level and the stable just keeps on growing. Yeah, look, I'm getting older, but um, um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunate, we still have a few winners. So, um, yeah, uh, I would certainly love to train half the amount of horses I've got at the moment, to be quite honest with you, and, uh, you know, revive Dubai again and feed Australia. I mean, those are all exciting plans, which obviously, uh, you know, Matthew will continue with. But, um, yeah, it's not easy when you've got a stable full of horses and you've got a, obligations to, to, to really nice people many friends uh, you can't let them down and um, many of them have supported Matthew in, in Australia too you know so we've got big plans and big visions but uh, it's going to take a lot to make it all work and this inspection is just around the corner yeah we've heard about those inspections year in year out let's hope we we've always been ready for them but we've never had them this is one we're having now so let's hope that the readiness is still there